Greetings. My name is Kathy Wood. I am CEO and CIO of ARC Invest. I'd like to uh, today cover the election in the context of fiscal policy and monetary policy, uh, then some of the economic indicators and what they're telling about, uh, telling us about the future, uh, then some of the market signals out there uh, in various marketplaces, and then talk a little bit about innovation and uh, some of the, um, the incredible reports we've gotten uh, in this earnings season. So first the election. Well, uh, 120 million people voted, uh, I believe. Uh, that's the largest turnout in, I believe, 100 years. I read that today. It surprised me. Um, I hope it's right. <laughs> anyway, uh, the markets are relieved, uh, mostly because of what has happened in the Senate. Uh, because the Republicans seem to have kept the Senate, Senate um, we know that capital gains tax rates are not going to go up uh, and uh, that there is no chance of the worst uh, proposal of all, a tax on unrealized capital gains. Uh, the market was, seemed to be leaning in this direction, moving into, into the election uh, even though the polls were saying something different. So the market in its wisdom got this right. Uh, so uh, the, the, uh, in the context of uh, fiscal policy and monetary policy, uh, we've, uh, the market's making bets on this, uh, the results of this election as well. Uh, in the case of big tech and healthcare, uh, which benefited, uh, I think what the market's saying, it's unlikely we're going to break up uh, the big uh, technology companies. And in healthcare, uh, we are not going to move towards nationalizing uh, the healthcare system at all. So, so that, that's good. We probably will still hear, as we always do, uh, no matter what year it is, about uh, drug pricing being a problem. Uh, as, a, as the next administration uh, takes hold. Uh, but uh, that's nothing new. And in the world of innovation, we're focused away from areas really uh, that are going to be impacted by some of the price sensitivity out there. And then on, in terms of equities, uh, we've seen the innovation space rewarded handsomely, uh, especially uh, during and after the coronavirus crisis. Innovation solves problems. Uh, we have a lot of problems and innovation is solving them. Um, we're seeing, to give you just a few examples, Facebook, uh, Cheryl uh, Sandberg on the Facebook uh, earnings call said, you know, online retail has taken a hundred basis points of market share every year for the last four years. And uh, in one quarter, it went up 400 basis points. So four years of share gains in one quarter, understandably so, but there's no turning back. Better, cheaper, faster, more convenient, uh, lower cost always wins. Uh, Teladoc in the uh, virtual care or telemedicine space, uh, it, it uh, said that 11% of all consumers in the United States uh, were willing to use or tried uh, telemedicine last year. That number went up to 46% in this last quarter. And uh, Square, uh, I like to mention that one because uh, it was instrumental in getting uh, the, the PPP, the Payment Protection Plan to small businesses much more quickly uh, than traditional banks. And uh, it is being rewarded. Its small businesses are, um, are taking up its cash for businesses, uh, 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 which mimics the, the cash app uh, for consumers at a very rapid rate. And so what Square is doing is bringing these small businesses who at one point couldn't even afford banking services. It gave them the point of sale um, a square on, on top to put on top of their cell phones so that they could take credit card purchases. 
Uh, and so that was the beginning that the, in the physical world, Square was meeting them there. Now Square is giving them tools to operate virtually. And that's what Cash for Business is. So um, uh, Square just reported a phenomenal quarter. It's being rewarded for helping so many people through this crisis. Um, I do wanna say a couple of uh, more things touching on innovation. Um, we have been saying for a very long time that five innovation platforms that involve 14 technologies uh, are ready for prime time. The coronavirus crisis has turbocharged all of them. They are in prime time. Uh, and that is why they're taking off at a much faster rate than even, even we expected. Um, and we've been trying to communicate uh, the opportunity uh, and, and many people have received that well, um, which is great. But then uh, as we're talking to investors, um, we, we have been a bit frustrated that we haven't been able to communicate to those who really feel like the broad-based benchmarks are where they uh, are, the, are the safest place for them to gain exposure to the stock market broadly. And so we put out, in order to illustrate that that is not true, that the, the broad-based benchmarks are not a good place uh, uh, these days because of all of this innovation, we put out a, a report called Bad Ideas. It's on our site. And we talked about all of the fixed assets that are effectively becoming stranded assets, whether we're talking retail or banking or energy or anything auto related, even uh, auto insurance. Uh, we think that uh, a lot of sectors are in harm's way and those sectors make up more than a third of the S&P 500 which is uh, the, the benchmark that many people use as, as their gauge. So 35% is, uh, is a big risk and will lead to, we believe, uh, subpar returns. Uh, so uh, I, I'd ask any of you who are wondering about the fixed assets that are going to be stranded and why they're going to be stranded and why book values are going to be written down, Exxon, last Friday wrote down, I think it was somewhere between 20 and $30 billion, which is about, uh, just for perspective, about 20% of its uh, equity market cap, which is, which is crazy, uh, but, but it's true. Uh, and that's because innovation is just blasting through the traditional world order. Now, more on innovation uh, during this post-COVID crisis environment. Uh, some interesting convergences are taking place. We know we've gone remote to work. We know we're enjoying uh, digital entertainment. Uh, we know we are uh, going to the doctors uh, through virtual visits, but something else is happening. There's a convergence among all of these digital services. We're seeing a convergence between entertainment and gaming. So social gaming, streaming gaming. We're seeing social commerce. So combination of online retail and a social experience like group buying or influencers helping us figure out what to buy and why. Uh, and social media is uh, developing new dimensions with virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, so we believe that we are moving into a digital third place, the metaverse. Now I know Chiba-san is going to speak to you about uh, the digitalization portfolio and some of the ideas that Nico Asset Management is evolving to help its clients uh, stay on the right side of change. So there's always a, a question of valuation when we're talking about innovation. And it is true, the PE ratios of innovative companies are very high today, but there's an important reason why. Many of them are investing aggressively now because these exponential growth opportunities are in very early days. And many of them 
are winner take most. In other words, the companies with the highest quality data uh, and the most data and the best artificial intelligence expertise are going to uh, run away with some of these markets, be the dominant players. Now, many people compare today to the tech and telecom bubble. It couldn't be more different. In the tech and telecom bubble, the seeds for all of the innovation taking place now were planted, uh, but they were planted and they were going to take 15 to 20 years to gestate. So here we are 15 to 20 years later, and these technologies are ready for prime time. Uh, so we are not going to have to value stocks using number of potential eyeballs, which is what investors did and speculators did in the tech and telecom bubble. Today, we are looking five years out and we're saying, where is this exponential growth going to take this network, this platform, this technology? And if the growth is exponential, we are willing to pay a lot today for companies to sacrifice short-term profits in order to capitalize on some of the biggest investment opportunities of our lifetimes. So we at ARC and at Nico Asset Management, our partner, uh, we are ready and waiting to help you stay on the right side of innovation the right side of change and uh, to a very exciting new world order. Thank you very much.